Lord is good, isn't he? Give him a hand, praise. Give him a hand, praise. Appreciate Aunt Cloud leading that worship. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know like worship is, you know, work. <laughs> you know, when you have to lead it. You know, so we definitely appreciate all that you do. Give him a hand as well. Way. Joey, you might have to hold that in your hand because I'm going to be moving around. So, how y'all doing? Good. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good. What up? What up? See, somebody got the right response. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? What up? What up? All right, that's what's up. Uh, so, we had Tag last week, which he spoke about loving your enemies. Yes. You want to be Christ like, then you have to love your enemies. We agree with that? Yeah. How we doing with that? Yeah. What up, what up? <laughs> what up, what up? <laughs> so, um, this week I am going to talk about solutions. So the first topic, you know, sometimes we get so ahead of ourselves or the problem becomes so deep that we get lost and forget solutions. You know, so as last month we talked about um, racism, social injustice, uh, where the church stand at, you know, and all of that. But I really want to focus on, start focusing on some solutions. And so, where does the solution start at? So we're going to explore that today. Uh, Mike, I'm going to need you to come up here. So we're going to explore that today because we're going to talk about solutions. So. This new series I'm starting is called Back for the First Time. Everybody say that with me. Back, Back for the First Time. Right. Say it with your chest. Right. Say it with your chest. Back for the First Time. All right, Back for the First Time. So I just, you know, took a piece of little fish real quick, and then I'm like, you know, all right, we're going to keep that title. So Back for the First Time. And so in order to move forward, you don't live back, but you can look back. You know, you don't you don't live there. But sometimes you have to glance back. Sometimes we gotta remember where we came from. Yeah. You know, and so you know we begin to lose sight when we don't remember where we came from. So I'm gonna talk about that today. Like where do we come from? And we're going back to the beginning for the first time. You know, so um, I got Mike, who's going to be my narrator. Why? Because I got these goggles on, and it's hard for me to see, so I got back up. So that's how we do that. And so um, we're going to go in Genesis. That's where we need to go. You know, we're going to go in Genesis. We're going to dive back there. So um, let me pray real quick, you know, because... I'm going to let you, this is going to be some heavy truth, but it's going to be truth anyhow. So, Lord, we thank you for today. We ask that I be removed out the way that you come in and that we just teach your word, you know, and that we receive your word. And even if our hearts is hardened towards it, then soften our heart to receive it. And so, Lord God, we thank you for today. Um, let me be removed. Let your spirit go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, so we're going to go in Genesis. We're going to start off in Genesis chapter 2. Let's go there. Oh, he got it right. He got it. So we're going to go in Genesis chapter 2. If y'all got to holler at me. Anybody can holler at me. Okay, cool. So we're going to go in Gen Genesis chapter 2. We're going to go in verse 7. Now, let me give you a little backdrop. God just finished creating Everything except for Eve. So we're gonna, we're gonna go back a little bit. Like I said, we're going back for the first time. And so we're gonna we're gonna start there. Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Go ahead, Mike. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. 
in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so here we got Adam being formed. Eve wasn't there yet. Adam being formed. So God already started giving instruction to Adam. When you look at Genesis chapter two, almost the entire chapter is about Adam. Eve don't come till way at the bottom. The entire chapter is talked about with Adam. So, Joey was saying earlier, when is this going to stop? It starts with Adam. That's where it stops. It starts with Adam. Let me be more specific. Men, it starts with us. Amen. So we're going to drop down to what verse fifteen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 read let's read a little bit more. The Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, "You may surely eat of every tree of the garden." But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Okay. Again, there was no Eve, follow me. There was no Eve. Eve didn't exist yet. God gave the instruction to Adam. He gave the instruction to Adam, don't eat of this tree. Now, we usually get caught up because we just focus on the tree. The first thing God did was create everything and said it was good. Then he told Adam, hey, you can eat everything, you can do, you can live. You just can't touch this thing. See, we, we focus on the one thing, but we don't focus on what everything that God has gave us. Sometimes we complain about the one thing that we don't have instead of the 99 that we do have. Everything that God has done for us, all the blessings that we have, and the one thing we don't have, that's what we complain about. That's what we, like, God gave us one instruction. Don't eat it, and don't get eat. Let me, let me be clear. If you was Adam, you would have did the same thing. So let's let's kill all that. Some of us would have did worse. I would have probably grabbed two, three fruits, but that's a different thing. <laughs> so, but you know, God has gave him total, hey, you got all of this. And then when you read in Genesis, you read that there was some gold in Eden. There was some gold there. Now, what was gold there for? Just because God wanted him to have it. God don't got no problem with you having money. God don't got no problem with you having nice things. Actually, he tells you to. But he may tell you, this is the one thing I don't want you to do. And so here you got Adam been instructed. He's been instructed before Eve got there. Before she got there, he was instructed to keep the garden. Keep it and tend to it. Another translation says, and cultivate the garden. Keep the garden and cultivate it. Well, let's first look at cultivate. What does cultivate mean? Cultivate means Produce more than what you got. You've been given this. Your job is to produce more than what you started with. Mm -hmm. 
question that I have is, are we producing more than we started with? That's the question for men today. Are we producing more than what we started with? Whatever, and everybody got different giftings. So everybody's not going to look the same. But in the gifting that God has given you, men, are you producing more than what you started with? What's your gift? Whether that's natural or spiritual. See, I'm hearing a lot of men complain today. I'm hearing a lot of men whine today. God is giving you all these things. And God is like, you have enough to do than worry about this tree. Whatever tree that is in your life. You have enough to do than to sit there and be worried about this tree right here because I gave you all these other trees. I gave you all these other blessings. Amen. And you wouldn't worry about the one thing I told you don't touch. And so the question goes back to the men. We want to see change, then men got to change. Men got to change. Men got to stand up. Men got to step up. Be the change that you want people to see. And don't get me wrong, we're not neglecting women at all. You know, we're not, we're, we're, they're not second class citizens. They're not just babysitters and cooking in the kitchen. And No, we'll, we'll get to that later on another week. But today, we're talking about men. And for some women, this may offend you, and I'm not here to offend you, but I'm here to be biblical. Amen. That's right. Tell the truth. We got to be biblical. That was the truth. And so, you know, and I love, I love all y'all in here. Y'all like my mother, sisters, <laughs> you know, but the, 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 the aspect is what's going on in the world today, men are not standing up. And then we're going to get into what men do. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead and read that next passage. Then the, eyes, then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves warm thoughts. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So here we have Fast forward, chapter three. You know, we have Eve ate the fruit first. The same, same told her to eat it. She ate it, and then she gave it to Adam. Now, notice what the scripture says. God came walking through the garden like he always did. And so what he said was, after they ate the fruit, Adam, where are you? Think about that for a minute. He said, Adam, where are you? He didn't say, where are y'all? He didn't say that. He said, Adam, where are you? He didn't, he didn't say, where is Adam and Eve? He didn't say, he said, he didn't do that. Adam, 
Where are you? That's what he said. Did Eve sin? Yes. But what did he say? Adam, where are you? And Adam did what we do today. It was the woman you gave me. That's what we do today. It was the woman you gave me. Adam attempted to pass the responsibility to somebody else. That's what he attempted to do. With God out of all people. But he attempted to pass the responsibility. God didn't mention Eve, where are you? God said, Adam, where are you? And then Adam said, Eve. See, when God asks, where are you? God was not just asking, where are you? Because I'm looking for you in the aspect, I don't know where you are. God is everywhere all the time. If you make your bed in hell, he is there. God is everywhere all the time. So the question couldn't have been about where are you located? This is not a question about location. This is a question about responsibility. How many people either got older, or you're the oldest, let me see some hand raised. You're either the oldest or you have a child that's the oldest. Let me see some hand raised. Let me get some participation. Let me get some participation. Now, whether you got kids that's the oldest or you're the oldest, have you ever heard the term, well, you're the oldest? You heard the term, well, you're the oldest. You're the oldest, therefore you're responsible. I remember my sisters are the oldest. No matter what mischief I get into, I knew at the end of the day, they gonna get in trouble for it. And I caused a lot of mischief. <laughs> Why? Because I'm one of the youngest. They the oldest. <laughs> you gonna get in trouble, not me. Need to bribe me. <laughs> but, you know, because you're first, you're the oldest, you're responsible. See, it wasn't a question of, I'm looking for you, I can't find you. It was a question of, Adam, you're responsible. Remember, the instruction was given to Adam before Eve was created. That's where the instruction was. Adam before Eve was created. So let me let me help us men. And I know people are watching online. Let me help us men. The instruction is given to us. God is looking at us as men. I don't care what kind of problem you're dealing with. I don't care if you're dealing with just problems with your family. I don't care if you're talking about social injustice. I don't care if you're talking about racism. I don't care what you're talking about. The problem comes down to Adam, I'm holding you responsible. Where are you at, Adam? How are you raising your kids, Adam? How are you treating your wife, Adam? How are you taking responsibility, Adam? Yeah. How are you dealing with your house, Adam? How are you dealing with your job, Adam? What is the picture that's being painted in society, Adam? See, it's not the woman you gave me. It's Adam. Where are you at? Well, she's more spiritual than I am. Adam, where are you at? Amen. Talk about it. Hello. Where are you at? Hello. Get responsible. Because God 
God is coming and he's saying, Adam, where you at? He want to know where you are. Go ahead and read the next passage of scripture, Mike. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to talk about, you know, order. We're talking about Adam. God created Adam first. And so he is responsible. So let's get some New Testament script for that. You know, because you know, sometimes we think the responsibility shifts because we have the grace now. You know, the grace talk that we do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so since we under grace, you got you should have some New Testament scripture to back up what you're saying. That's right. So let's go to the New Testament. Go ahead, Michael. Well, Adam was first formed, then Eve. That's first Timothy two thirteen. 1 Corinthians 11, 8 through 9. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. 1 Corinthians 11, 3 says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we just read three passages of scripture in the New Testament. And, and so and it's talking about responsibility. It's from the aspect of responsibility. You know, and it's not saying, let me clarify, man, every man is ahead of every woman. That's not what the scripture is saying. So when you read other translations, it says man is ahead of a woman. But it, it's making it real clear. Man, you are responsible because you was here first. See, that word first that is in First Timothy, that word first means priority. That word first means responsibility. You was here first, therefore you are responsible. That instruction was given to you first. Amen. Yeah. Then, peep this out. The instruction was given to Adam before he was created. Fast forward to 2020. The instruction was given to Adam while he was a single man. Correct. Eve wasn't created yet. And he was given instruction. So when you read 1 Timothy and it says because he was created first. We are responsible. It doesn't neglect women. It's just saying who is responsible. Who's responsible. So let's get this understanding. Like The man is the foundation. Man is foundation. We are the foundation. The man is the foundation. And so when you look at the foundation, guess what? The foundation don't look pretty. If you want to build a house, you know, Mark builds foundations for a living. If you want to build a house, the first thing is the foundation. It's not saying women ain't critical. Women are critical, crucial. We need women. <laughs> so we need women. But the foundation is laid by the man. Amen. Again, it's not a popular cultural thing, but it's biblical. It's said there. So the foundation is made by the man. You don't need the foundation to look pretty. That doesn't matter. You ain't got to decorate the foundation, but the foundation needs to be solid. Why? When you build in the house, if the foundation is not solid, the whole house is not solid. So the question for the men in here and online or wherever, is your foundation solid? That's the question. Is it solid? Good. Can they go to you? Can, 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 when it comes to your leadership and your guidance, whether it's 
It, it, can people go to you because your foundation is solid? Can you be sought out because your foundation is solid so people was trying to build? See, the woman built the walls and the decorations and all of that other stuff, which is needed. But men, is the foundation solid? Can people go to you? Can people trust your counsel? If they can't trust your counsel, your foundation is not solid. You know, when the foundation is a little bit off, I did a lot of painting over the years. And so, did a lot of painting. And I, I've been to so many houses that I had to go back and repaint, go back and repaint because there's a crack in the wall. And then they thinking it's the wall, but then we find out it's the foundation. So it doesn't matter how many times I kept painting it over, the crack is gonna eventually reappear. Because the foundation ain't solid. Some of us is going through the same type of problems because the foundation is not solid. Men. Men. We're going through the same stuff because the foundation is not solid. So we keep trying to repaint over these cracks in our walls and our lives and it keep reappearing. And guess what? It gets bigger. And so it keep reappearing because our foundation is uneven. So the crack keeps reappearing and it's getting worse. Men. Men. Everybody say men. men. Let the men say men. men. Say us. Us. Okay. The foundation isn't leveled. And then some of us have a crack foundation and we need a new foundation. And so everything is off in your life because you have an uneven foundation. Why? Because you strayed away from the instruction that God gave you. That's, that's what happened. And then what we say? It's the woman you gave me. Or it's his fault, or it's because I ain't have a dad in my life, you know, or it's because I've been abused as a child. It, we we have these reasons that we try to pass it on to Eve. See, what I learned is it may not be your fault, but it is your problem. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I didn't have a dad in my life, in and out. And some things that I picked up was not good. A lot of it wasn't good. But I can't sit up here and say, well, it's because my dad wasn't in my life. Some of us been in the faith for 10, 15 years, and we talking about it's because my dad wasn't in my life. Fix it. That's right. Fix it. Amen. Get it right. If you don't have that in your life, find one in the faith. That's good. Men, because I know we don't do that. Find one in the faith. That's good. There's plenty. You know, and so we come with these excuses because we're trying to pass the torch. And God is like, Adam, you are responsible. See, because it's still your problem. See, even when Adam attempted to pass it on to Eve, God still dealt with Adam. He addressed Eve. We'll talk about that another time. But he still dealt with Adam. So, when we're talking about social injustice or family or whatever the case may be, it goes back to Adam, where are you? Right. Adam, where are you? Right. That's where it goes back to. At where is your stance? You know, 
And some of us is not busy enough. God said, cultivate the ground and keep it. Now, again, we already went over cultivate means to produce more. Some of us stop dreaming. Some of us stop, you know, he said he called the old man to dream dreams and the young man to have visions. Some of us stop dreaming. Some of us gave up. God giving you something for you to cultivate and you stop dreaming. And the other aspect was keep the garden. Let me translate to 2020. Keep your house. The garden was Adam's house. The garden was Adam's house. What are you keeping it from? There's a snake in the garden. Come on, man. There's a snake there. See, God warned Adam before Satan tempted Eve. There's something that you got to be on the lookout for because it's coming. See, us men, we got to be on the lookout for stuff because it's coming. That's good. That's good. God is telling us, hey, keep your garden. Right. It's coming. It's coming. Whatever that is, it's coming. He told them before Eve even existed. Keep it. Problems are coming. Satan is coming. Demons are coming. Everything is coming to attack your house. Everything is coming to attack the blessings that God has given you. Keep the garden. What we do, we do what Adam did then, we do it now. We chill out. We ain't worried about it. We ain't even asked that. What do you mean by that? Like, we don't, we don't even do that. We don't even do that. And so, he was told to keep the garden. Protect the garden. And so then when he, when they sin and, 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 and God is looking for Adam, he takes leaves and they cover themselves. Now Eden was the house that God gave them. And God visited frequently. So they was always in the presence of God. Always. And so when they said they took the they took the leaves and they covered themselves. How many men are covering themselves with the blessings that God gave them while in his presence? What was a blessing, now they try to take the blessings and they cover themselves up. They cover themselves up with the blessings. So what does that mean? People can be in church and cover themselves up. That's what that means. I can be before people and cover myself up. So they took the blessings and they covered themselves up. You know, and so, and God still called out Adam. Who told you you was naked? Called him out. Who told you? This conversation didn't have not happened with Eve yet. Correct. Adam. Correct. Who told you? Because I'm coming to you because you are responsible. So who told you you was naked? You know, it was the tree of good and evil. It was a Wi-Fi tree. Internet ready. 
you know, Google it. The Google tree. <laughs> Had all this information of good and evil. Good. It just exposed them to be aware. See, there's certain things that God don't want us to dive in because we're not ready for it. Anybody been in a situation where you're like, okay, that's more than I really wanted to know? <laughs> talk about it, talk about it. I ain't need all that for it. What's the term we use? <laughs> TMI. TMI, too much information. <laughs> TMI. That's it. They wasn't ready. And there's some things that God's telling you, don't do it. You ain't ready. Yeah, that's good. I'll make it real plain, because it's me. I had kids starting at 15. I started popping on kids early. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the child support. I wasn't ready for the emotional drama that I got to deal with. I wasn't ready for none of that for 20 years. Why? Because I jumped in and I wasn't ready. I'm still talking to Freestyle? Yeah. You still keeping it real? Yeah. I wasn't ready. Wasn't ready to be a teen parent. They turned around 19, did the same thing. I wasn't ready. And then it was still, you are responsible. You got to take care of these kids. That's the 2020 version. <laughs> Alex, you responsible. You got to take care of these kids. Even if we're going to pull it from your paycheck without your permission, you taking care of these kids. Thankfully, they have my permission, but still. And, 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 and guess what? That made things tight. Like Adam and Eve. Once they got kicked out of the garden, they got tight. That made things tight. For me, it was for 20 some years, that made it extra tight. Why? Because I had to go to the Google tree. Some of us is going through some things right now. Why? We got that Google tree. We went on Wi-Fi. We had, we had to know the information. Had to open Pandora's box. Mm. Talk about it. And God is saying, Adam, you're responsible. Even though Eve ate first. See, it goes back to even though it ain't your fault, but it's your problem. Eve ate first. Eve ate first, and God said, Adam, where you at? Correct. <laughs> so what he said? That's what he said. She ain't first. Adam, where you at? Well, my kids is doing this. Adam, where you at? My wife is doing this. Adam, where you at? <clears throat> well, my brother or so and so did this. Adam, where you at? See, that's what it comes back to. Take your responsibility. Not because women are secondary. Correct. When it comes to responsibility, God is saying, Adam, where you at? If we want to see change, it starts with us. That's it. Not the government. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. it. That's it. Not politics. It starts with us. Men, specifically. It starts with us. And guess what? It's going to be hard. But it still starts with us. Trying to pass the blame to somebody? No, that's not. 
That's not what it does. That's not what it do. God is not doing that. He's saying, Adam, where you at? We got to be the change. Amen. I got one amen out of that. We got to be the change. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God gave instruction before she got here. God has given you instruction before whoever you with got here. Before whoever you went, before you got, before they got here, God has given you instruction. Yep. And guess what? You're not allowed to blame the person that you went. Correct. You're not allowed to do that. You can't say, but the wife that you gave me, oh, look what she did. We do that a lot. Yeah. Look what she did. How did you respond to what she did? That's what God is going to ask you. Yep. What was your response? How did you respond? Adam, where you at? Not location. Where you at on responsibility? Because she's at fault. And very much so, she can be at fault. But Adam, where are you? Are you still holding on to me, even though she may stray away? Stay. Where are you at? Mm -hmm. You still holding on? You still believe I'm there? Am I still your father? Am I still your God? Because she strayed away. Does that give me the excuse to not be responsible? Teach it. She did wrong, so I gotta do wrong with her. Because you're afraid of her being mad at you. See, I'm gonna make it real plain. Go ahead. Go ahead. She's gonna be mad at you, so I can't stay on what God told me to do because. She's going to be mad at me. Adam, where you at? Yeah, that's Hello. it. Hello. Where you at? That's Hello. It. You know, let me make it real plain. Because I may not get a little sample. <laughs> make it real plain. Talk, bro. Talk. I'm back. Because I may not get a sample. I'm going to keep it clean for the internet. I'm going to get a sample. I'm going to keep it clean for the I better, I, I, I better not stand my ground because I may not get a sample. Hello. Adam, where you at? Yeah, yeah. Where you where you at? That's it. See, God deals with Eve. Yeah. And guess what? Adam didn't it, Adam didn't have to deal with Eve because God dealt with Eve. Adam didn't even have to touch it because God dealt with Eve. Correct. Correct. You don't have to address every issue because let God deal with Eve. It's good, bro. It's good. You're supposed to keep your stance with God. Don't God don't want anybody coming between Him. That's true. And same thing for women. And, 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 and there's scripture to back that. Right. Hey, you don't come before God. That's right. And there's scripture to back that. If it's a place that you are out of line and she's honoring God, guess what? She continues to honor God. Correct. Correct. That's what happens. Right. We'll get to that in a couple of weeks. She's supposed to remain honoring God. But for right now, Adam, where you at? Because God dealt with Eve. Adam did. God was uh, God gave Adam instruction. Adam the one that gave her the instruction. Notice the scripture didn't say 
God went to Eve and Eve, hey, don't touch this tree. That's right. God went to Adam. Adam went to Eve. And then when it came time to address an issue, God dealt with Eve. We coming up with these excuses. Excuses. Our job is to keep and cultivate the garden. See, God gave, I'm just going to put on the minor plug. God gave Adam a job. He gave him a house and he gave him a job before he even existed. So, for single ladies or single men, if you don't got no job, don't accept nobody that doesn't have a job. God provides that for Adam. And then he'll bring Eve. Keep the garden cultivated. That is your responsibility as men. Is the men still in here? Amen. 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 See, we good with sports. We, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, hey, I'm in sports heavy. We good with sports. But guess who's supposed to be leading in worship? Man. Guess who's supposed to be in the forefront? Man. When you read about Israel, guess who was in the forefront? When you look at Jesus, guess he was in the forefront. Why? Because men are responsible. Back in Israel, all the men used to leave. God would call all the men. Because once or twice a year. God would call all the men. All the men left to be with God. To worship and get instruction. All the men left. That's why I do men's retreats. All the men left to be with God. And guess what? God still protected the rest of Israel even though it was women and children there. Why? Because the men were seeking him. So he made sure to protect home. See, we come up with these excuses on why we can't worship. Why we can't get together. How come we can't do men's retreats? We come up with these excuses. I'm still talking to men, right? Yeah. Yeah. We come up with all these excuses. Uh, when it comes to prayer, if we have corporate prayer, how come all the women are here? It's true. Why the women are here? Yeah. Because men is looking at it as a feminine thing to pray. Well, Jesus prayed all the time. That's right. Correct. I don't think anybody's getting more man than Jesus. Correct. So when we have prayer, wait a minute. But let me put on a sports game during playoffs. I bet you I can get you there. Wait a minute. Then you wonder why chaos is going on in your house because eventually your foundation got shaped. That's right. Now you got some cracks in your foundation. Well, you should have spent time in prayer and seeking God. Then you want somebody to come fix it. You need to fix it. You the man. You the man. Adam, where you at? Where you at? It's time for us to get back responsible. And so, Mike, read this those last passages of scriptures in the in, at the end. Scriptures tell us, that's what you want to know. The scriptures tell us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, mm -hmm. is a life giving spirit. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 
of the ego. See, the scripture talks about the first Adam, but the scriptures also talk about the last Adam. The last Adam is Jesus. The last Adam is Christ. The last Adam is restoration. We no longer have the excuse. It's the wife you gave me, or it's because of Eve. Because the last Adam, which is Christ, restored all of that. Yes. You can no longer use the excuse, I didn't have a dad, even though most of us did. Myself and group. You can no longer use the excuse, I've been abused. Today's time, a lot of men have. You can no longer you can no longer use the excuse I didn't know. There's a church on every block. That's right. Well, I couldn't I couldn't read your word. You can get the word for free on your phone. I didn't have time to pray. Well, I know here at Living Faith, you can always come in here and pray. You don't need a crowd to pray. Turn off some of that sports and come pray. Mm. Mm. When you're not going through a problem. Mm. See, there's no longer the excuse. The Bible says that he will return the sons back to the fathers and the fathers back to the sons. Amen. Amen. That's in the church. Mm. You need a father? Come get one. Right. Mm. Kill your pride. Stop talking about I don't want nobody to know about my problems. Tell them what you're dealing with. Come deal with them in a genuine relationship. Not when you need something. This is in the church. The church is equipped. Maybe you gotta turn off the TV for a second and have a Bible study. And then guess what? I don't know what to talk about. It doesn't matter. You can take one of these messages that I just gave. What do you think about the word today? And start from there. You don't have to be no scholar to get into the word. Adam, where you at? Because now the last Adam has came. And died and rose. I was in the resurrection. He died in robes, tore the veil, said it is finished, which means that's it. There's no more excuses. No more excuses. And it starts with us. It starts with us. Adam, where are you at? Everybody say, Adam, where are you at? Adam, where are you at? Say it with your chest. Adam, where are you at? And I'm going to make it public. I'm going to encourage every woman in here. I know Vince going to be mad at me about this. Every woman in here, even if they don't mind, every woman in here, you got an issue. And it seems like the foundation is shaking. In a nice way, just look at them and say, Adam, where you at? And then, and then when they huff and puff again, it's just because it's gonna make people, it's gonna make us humble ourselves. Notice I said us. It's gonna make us humble ourselves. Adam, where you at? Because it's gonna put a check like, wait a minute, let me back up. Let me read that. Some of us is going to be like, I don't want to hear that. But you just look at them, and you don't do it in no sarcastic way. But you just say, Adam, where you at? Where you at? See, the responsibility starts with us. And there's no more excuses. No more excuses. Let's stand up.